very good morning our honorable guests dr mini thomas and mrs devyani kankoji our faculty members and my dear friends i adhira kullara chairperson of wie ieee vsit students branch would like to warmly welcome you all to sri at the rate 2022 at the rate break the bias a collaboration between ieee wie BSIT and Women's Development Cell (WDC). IEEE Women in Engineering (WIE) is a global network of IEEE members and volunteers dedicated to promoting female engineers and scientists, and inspiring girls worldwide to pursue academic interest in engineering and science. WIE envisions a vibrant community of IEEE women and men working together to innovate. and initiate for the benefit of humanity let's begin this event with the blessings of god saraswati i kindly request everyone to rise for saraswati vandana thank you now i kindly request dr sarika chauhan ma'am branch mentor of ieee vsit students branch to say a few words thank you athira so a very good morning everyone i dr sarika chauhan would like to welcome everyone to our finale to our event 3 at 2022 break the bias which is a collaboration of wi ieee vsit and women's development cell wdc of vsit these last few days have been a truly magnificent experience we had planned a week long event on account of international women's day during which we discussed a variety of topics we held our first session on women's rights where we learned about numerous laws and articles pertaining to women and we invited advocate nadia sarguru to speak on the topic which was well received by the audience on march 8 we had a yoga session where mrs dipali rana taught us various exercises to stay fit and healthy on march 9 we had a self defense session where professionals like ms gargi chavan and ms Harshada Sate illustrated some strategies and techniques for defending ourselves in any situation. On March 10th, we held a women's health session wherein Dr. Shilpa Desai discussed the importance of mental health, the problems that can arise if it is ignored, and how it affects our performance. Yesterday, on March 11th, we had a personality grooming session led by Ms. Jenny Haria. we spoke who spoke to us about doing the right thing at the right time in social situation as for sri it has become our annual event a tradition that honors and gives well deserved recognition to strong empowering movement in stem while also fueling the inspiring inspiration of young minds and providing great role models for them to look up to today it is with great pleasure that i announce our event lined up which includes dr mini thomas and mrs devyani kankoje both are extraordinary ordinary women who have achieved great success in their respective fields and i can't wait to hear their talk so let's go ahead and thank you once again for joining us today thank you
and welcome once again to the finale of our three at the 2020 Break the Bias. Over to you, Athira. Chetna. Hello, ma'am. Yes, Chetna. Over to you. Thank you so much for the oration, ma'am. Uh, so our first speaker for today is Dr. Minnie Thomas. Dr. Minnie Thomas is a professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering, JMI, and was the director of the National Institute of Technology, Piru Chirapalli, from 2016 to 2021. Dr. Thomas was the founding director of the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, CIE. With a keen interest, we will guidance and leadership in IT Trichy established the first center of excellence in manufacturing in 2018. Dr. Thomas has done extensive resource work in the area of supervisory control and data acquisition system, substation and distribution automation, and smart grid. She has published over 150 research papers in the international journals and conferences of repute. She, is, she has supervised 16 PhDs and has successfully completed many research projects. She is the author of the textbook Power System Kada and Smart Grids by CRC Press. Dr. Thomas has set up the first of its kind Kada laboratory and substation automation laboratory at JMI and as the founder and coordinator started a unique first full-time MTech program in the Faculty of Engineering and Technology. For these contributions, Dr. Thomas won the IEEE Educational Activities Board Meritorious Achievement Award 2015. She is a distinguished lecturer of IEEE Power and Energy Society and is a certified trainer for capacity building of women managers in higher education by UGC and has conducted many training sessions for women empowerment. Dr. Thomas is very active in professional societies like IEEE and has traveled ex extensively around the globe, delivered lectures in prestigious universities and has interacted with all the technical experts from all over the world. So, ma'am, we would like to welcome you with a small sapling from our side. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. And without taking much of your time, I would like to start with your session. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chetna and uh, Dr. Sarika. Thank you for inviting me. It's uh, always a pleasure to talk to um young uh, young minds it gives me immense pleasure and i feel that it's my duty to encourage more women to take up leadership positions and guide them so uh, my congratulations to the whole team of uh, vsit for organizing this week long program um, and you had a variety of programs which actually shows the um, uh, interest taken by your administration as well as the women cell as well as the women in engineering group there uh, to organize uh, a bundle of events which uh, really help girl students and girls um, and boys um, in your institute so congratulations on that um, uh, it, it covered I think almost everything which um, uh, girl wants to know starting from uh, the uh, legal aspect grooming yoga and uh, you know you are showing them uh, many people who have been successful in in life so um, um, my talk primarily will uh, i will explain uh, my journey as um, a person um, you know uh, how i reached the position of director of nit trichy um, along the journey, I was alone at many places as a single woman um, in, in many aspects um, and maybe the first woman to do this, do that. But then, um, uh, you know, it, 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 it was um, sometimes difficult, sometimes it was easy. So I will just um, describe my journey from childhood in a few words. And along with that, some attributes, which I found very useful. And I'll end up with some tips for women and men 
uh, which uh, I discovered in my life, my, my life journey as a professional. So this is what I am planning to do. And uh, I mean, to sum it up or your, to give you a perspective, I feel that, you know, I could achieve whatever little I, I, I have achieved is because I took a lot of risks in life. I grabbed opportunities. So I was uh, planning to uh, give a title to my talk that you wake up and grab the opportunities. Um, so um, uh, let me start um, from childhood. I grew up in a small village. I was born and I grew up in a small village in Kerala, central Kerala, uh, in Ernakulam district. Both my parents were teachers. Um, only when I, you know, I had a very unbiased up upbringing because we are talking about three at 2022 um, and we are talking about bias, everything. So um, I had a very unbiased upbringing. Um, I had a brother and I had lots of cousins and uncles and aunties around my house. But I was never, ever, uh, I never, ever felt that I'm a, I'm a girl child, so I should behave differently or I will be treated differently, never. So I grew up in a society and in a household which gave equal freedom to me as my brother which I realized only after mo I moved out of Kerala when I uh, got married and came to Delhi. And then when I started traveling far and wide in India and abroad, I realized that's not the case with everyone. So I was very lucky to have a very, very unbiased upbringing. And that's the mindset I have that, you know, um, there's nothing which prevents you, uh, a lady from becoming successful because my mother was a working mother all my aunties were working. So it, it naturally came to me that I should also be a professional. And uh, when I, uh, um, you know, I, I'll just um, share one slide which shows my career growth path, which you can all, all um, uh, see um, and understand what I, one minute, yeah. So this is what my career path looks like. Um, you know, the student days, I graduated in um, 1984, my BTEC from Kerala, 86 MTEC from IIT Madras. So I'm sure all of you can relate to some phase of my career. So I thought I will show it like this, just one slide, I have no more slides uh, and I can explain. So um, my dream was to teach. I, I want to challenge each one of you. How many of you want to teach? Um, it, it's the best profession as far as I'm concerned because you are responsible to only your students. And if you're a good teacher, you get respect everywhere and all the time. So I wanted to teach. So I went back to Kerala to teach in REC Calicut, NIT Calicut, I joined. Luckily, I got a job that time, permanent government job. Um, joined REC Calicut, got married in 1986. And I had to move to Delhi because my husband was um, in all in the Institute of Medical Sciences. He was a doctor. Husband and his family, they were all in Delhi. So uh, my parents said, you know, you must be with your husband. So you must resign your job, the government job of REC NIT Calicut and go, go to Delhi. So I coolly resigned and I came to Delhi, joined full-time PhD in IIT Delhi. So what I have shown as arrows are all opportunities which I got, many other opportunities. But I think the move to Delhi was one of the golden opportunities I got. I realized it only much, much later in life because since I moved to Delhi and joined full-time PhD, I had a PhD by the time I was 29. This is way back in early 90s, you remember, a PhD in engineering. And that gave me a head start as a teacher. So my advice is if you want to study and acquire degrees, acquire it at the right time. I'm not saying that you can't do it later, but better you acquire your degrees at the right time, especially um, uh, for women. Um, uh, only, only thing is my in-laws and my husband was also very supportive. I did my PhD with after marriage with my daughter. She was born... One, one year into my PhD, but then um, that 
PhD degree at an early age gave me a head start and I joined Delhi College of Engineering um, to teach again a UPSC job. Um, I started teaching in Delhi College of Engineering, but then at that point of time, I uh, just left everything um, in the sense that I was only doing my routine teaching uh, because I had to look after my children. I had a son and a daughter, so I have to look after my children. So I was just doing my routine work as a professor. That's my second take that, you know, um, many women, many young girls are worried if I take up a profession or career, what will I do with my family? The point is um, motherhood and family are part of you. I mean, for most of the people whom, uh, you know, it, it's part of life. So you can't postpone it indefinitely saying that I want my career and then I will do my family. Then I have my children. That that will be too late. What I mean to say is once you, uh, once in your job, you can always slow down. I have done that. I did my research. I joined Delhi College of Engineering. I slowed down till my kids were like, my son was still, he was three, four years. I did just my routine work. I didn't do anything additional. So I did my routine teaching. I did my normal teaching job. That's it. But I gave all the attention to my, my, my kids. And then, um, Delhi College was moving out of Delhi to, uh, you know, um, 40 kilometers away from Delhi. And, uh, but, but then um, before that, let me tell you, I was very scared to take up responsibilities. I just used to do my routine work, but I was perfect in my work. Like if I take up a responsibility, I will do 100%. I will give my 100% to my, uh, my um, job. And... I took up everything what my colleagues asked me to do, my HOD or whoever it is. I never asked, Mujhe kya milega? because nowadays the trend is, you know, not nowadays when I moved out of Kerala and generally now, now when I talk to people in the last maybe 20 years, anything is done for something. You know, you, you, why do you take up IEEE? volunteer positions, for example. I've seen so many kids, so many engineering students and even professionals take up leadership positions or volunteer positions for a certificate or just to have their name there. But uh, let's not do that. If you're, if you're doing something, do it for the, uh, for the experience you gain out of it, not for a certificate or for, uh, for enhancing your bio data. That's not the that's the whole not the whole purpose. The experience you gain out of it remains with you. So that attitude I always had that you know it doesn't matter whether it's going to benefit me in in the short term, but I will do it because I am gaining experience out of it. And I, I was I was so I was doing all that when I was uh, 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 you know in Delhi College of Engineering, and when the college was moving away from my home, I moved to Jamia Millia Islamia in 1996. Um, now Jamia Millia Islamia, uh, I have shown that movement as red again. I moved to Jamia Millia Islamia. Uh, that's another big opportunity which I got. Of course, I, I became an associate professor. I got a promotion also. I was moving to a higher position. But at that point of time, BC was one of the top 10 institutions, um, Jamia was not very well known at that time. Of course, Jamia is a central university, uh, 101 years old. Now we are sixth in, in university category in the NIRF and everything. Jamia is very well known now, but in 1996, the engineering faculty at Jamia was very, very small, new, and uh, you know, there were a lot of issues. So my even my family was not very keen on that move. But why I have put it as a big risk I took, a uh, big risk I took, but a calculated risk was Jamia proved to be so good to me because I had the freedom to do whatever I wanted. 
So there was no MTech program there. I started the first MTech program with industry support. I established the substation automation lab, the SCADA lab. I started the Center for Innovation there, and it's a large university with 17,000 students and nine faculties and everything from school to PhD in, you know, um, um, everything from law to natural science to education to social sciences and engineering architecture, everything is there. So it was so good to me and it was very near my house and, you know, I, I could take care of my children in the evenings, et cetera, et cetera. So that was a big risk which I took at that time, moving from a very famous um, institute to a lesser known faculty where I had all the freedom to do whatever I wanted. So uh, that's what I have shown in red that moving to Jamia was such a uh, good thing which happened. Um, now, uh, I discussed this already. I had, um, I established the SCADA lab. I became a professor in 2001. I, I got my promotions on time because I was, I had my PhD already at the age of 29 and I was continuously innovating, doing my research. That's what I said. Even I, even if I slowed down uh, when I had my kids for three, four years, it does, it didn't hamper me by the age when I was just turning 40, I became a professor because I was, uh, and, and let me tell you, I never carried work home. I, I will sit from nine to five or 5.30 in the Institute and complete my work. And how could I complete? Because I had my support system at home. That's another lesson, which I want to tell all the girls here. You need to develop your support system if you want to have a career as well as a good family life. What was my support system? I was married into a family in Delhi where my in-laws were there. My husband stayed with his parents and I moved into that house. Even now I'm with my in-laws, although I just lost my father-in-law recently, but you know, that's, that's, that was my primary support system. They were so uh, supportive and they were there for my children. And, and of course, the beautiful help, help I had in the form of maids all through my life and the relatives. So you had to spend time and energy to build your support system. If you are a working woman, there is no other go. You are not a superwoman. You can't do it all. You can't do justice to your a job as well as you can you can't do justice to your children you have to develop your support system and in India there are many many ways in which you can develop your support system but you have to spend time to develop your support system that will be uh, that is you know that that will help you um, build your career as well as your family um then again, as I said earlier, I was very reluctant to take up responsibilities. Uh, once I became a professor, I could become the head of the department and many other things, but I was happy with, okay, um, uh, you know, um, let me do my lab, let me say, I was, you know, uh, innovative doing different things, but um, the headship was given to somebody else. I never bothered. It's okay. I will sit at this corner and do it. Then this, uh, you know, there's a UGC has a workshop uh, that time had a workshop series called capacity building for women managers in higher education. That's, the, you know, um, the number of women leaders are very, very limited. For example, when I was the director, I am the first woman director of NIT Trichy, as well as I was the only lady director among 86 centrally funded institutions at that time. All IITs, all NITs, like 23 IITs, 31 NITs, 25 triple ITs, six ICERs, 86 centrally funded institutes. I was the only lady, all other men. So whenever I go, even Jamia, when I became a professor, I was the only lady professor among some 150 professors. Um, so... Uh, this uh, so so this UGC started this program to encourage more women to take up responsibilities. Um, even today, um, you know the uh, the number of women um, at assistant professor level are much more. But when you move up, the number of associates much less, number of professors very less, 
who takes up leadership positions even less you look at the vice chancellors or directors very very few you can count them on your finger fingertips so that ugc started this program and somebody just dragged me into it they said mini you please come and attend this course uh, in jnu so i said okay let me do what let me see what is happening there so i went there it's a six day workshop and it it really transformed my outlook i said what am i doing i have the capability or i'll develop my capability let me take up uh, let me take up some responsibility so i started um, you know next my turn i took up the headship i had lot of problems during my headship because i believe in being um, very straight forward i i don't uh, become party to any wrong doing so you know i am not in any group i i will i am always neutral and you know the my upbringing is not to bring in anything into your decisions nobody can influence me in my decisions i will look at the paper i don't care who send the paper only the matter is important to me and i will go by rules because i got everything on merit so i will support only merit so um but i could survive everybody understood that she is a lady but she will not allow anybody to fire a gun from her shoulder so i got the respect i could achieve whatever i i had planned and uh, so that capacity building workshop i would take that was another um, opportunity given to me then i uh, started my you know hod then i became the center public information officer of jami i did that position for 7 years i set up the um, information office again it was new uh, setting up but uh, then the substation automation lab happened then another good thing which happened was i was always member of ieee from the time i was a phd scholar because we used to refer our ieee publications and uh, i became a member and in delhi college of engineering we started the uh, you know their technical fest called troika even now it's going strong which started it in 1992 and in jamia i started the i rejuvenated the student uh, uh, you know branch of jamia milia we started the women in engineering there delhi section um, i started the women in engineering and then i got picked up to volunteer for the asia pacific and then in 2009 i became a global ieee volunteer i was uh, elected as the vice chair of the mga board and i was continuously traveling five six times a year abroad and um, you know i was presenting at board meetings i was uh, you know taking up um, I, i was interacting with people across the globe that really developed my personality and that really gave me the confidence to face anything because um, you know when you go for global meetings what i have noticed with people from this part of the world is you know if a suppose i am traveling to the us for a meeting the meeting starts at 8 am which may be 8 pm for me um a lot of people get late a lot of people will sleep during the meeting but then uh you can't do that in an international forum so um you know it gave me a lot of exposure and lot of confidence as, as a as as a person um and exposure how meetings are conducted what are the rules how to everything i learned from uh, uh, volunteering for uh, these position and i got mentors international mentors who are uh, working in the same field of research but from industry so they helped me set up the sub substation automation lab they helped me in so many things they have become personal friends now so that global exposure this professional society gave and the confidence it gave was immense so i think that you know global volunteering of ieee gave me took me to a different level um then um, uh, you know in 2012 onwards um i became you know senior administrator in my university then i was volunteering for many other things um and then um uh, i i wrote a textbook uh, because i started teaching something new that is also what i want to tell you all uh, listening to me my research was 
something totally different from i mean my phd work was something different from what i am doing now for the last 20 years um i couldn't do much practical in um, you know i was doing some research on transformers so i left it i told you during my dc times and i wanted to do something new when i joined jamia so i picked up power automation as my i got some interest in power automation and i learned power automation on my own i started the new mtech program in power automation i set up these two labs in power automation and 15 years i taught without a textbook power automation finally i i wrote a textbook uh, along with one of my mentors from the us uh, published by crc press and then i started the innovation center and the livelihood business incubation center at jamia and then all of a sudden in 2016 this um, you know Uh, offer came from NIT Trichy. I had applied, of course, because my mother-in-law only encouraged me to apply, and my husband, that you know, you have done so much, you're getting bored in Jamia. Why don't you apply for this director position? I applied, and I was surprised when I was selected because there were so many people who were interviewed. So it's it's a it's a it's God's grace and it's a miracle that I was appointed the director of the best NIT. but i was in a dilemma why should i move from delhi to you know i had never been to uh, trichy earlier uh, so i was in a dilemma why should i do it i'm well settled in delhi and you know i have my labs i have my mtech program i have my innovation center but then my father in law mother in law my parents my husband my children my friends they all said no mini you have to do it you have had enough you know exposure and you had enough come out of your comfort zone go there it's 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 god's will and it's uh, it's a public service now you have to give back to the society go to trichy so it took me two weeks to decide i said okay i'm going so i moved to trichy and that was again one of the big risks i took because i was leaving my family all of them i was moving to trichy alone a new place and see i'm no i'm new to nit system all the one year i worked in rec as a lecturer i am from a central university nit system is different and i had so many problems to tackle in trichy but by god's grace <clears throat> we could do extremely well my team there i must thank all the faculty staff and students there we developed a strategic plan we are implementing it so effectively so we moved from 9th from 12th rank to 9th in engineering just behind the vintage iits and overall from 34 we moved to 24 we set up so many centers so many things happened in trichy and 5 years was wonderful although it was 24/7 work so much of pressure so much of um things to tackle but then um you know um, it it was such a such a good thing you know such a good memory of five years um at uh, trichy and uh, then i moved back to delhi now getting um, just started teaching day before yesterday at jamia millia i'm enjoying it um and uh, my children um, i've been uh, mentoring them and uh, they are doing well as such um i will stop sharing but i will just talk a few more things for another 2 minutes um because i uh, i want to give some tips for all the uh, women here uh, that you know um never claim special treatment as a woman then you have lost the game um what i mean is i had so many women colleagues who will say that you know um i am um i am i have my kid to look after i have to do it i have to go home early don't do that uh, and that's why i said you have to develop your support system uh, because you are in a profession and you are you are claiming to be um, treated at par with a gentleman so then don't claim special treatment and i have seen many women do that so that is detrimental and my take is that you know we have to work harder than men to be successful at work that's my experience and you have to prove in the beginning that you know you have to um work harder than men uh, initially because people are reluctant to give you work because they're not confident because that's 
I don't blame the men because that's a mindset of the society. We have, we have been growing up in a patriarchal society. So that's the mindset. So we have to change that mindset, show that we are capable, we can, we can do it. So, uh, and you have to be visible and be innovative all the time. Don't repeat what somebody has done. Just, just change it a bit and, you know, bring in your perspective into whatever you are doing and then go ahead and do it. Nothing, nobody can prevent you. Uh, so these are my, uh, you know, two cents about uh, what I did and how I uh, carried myself. Um, I, I, I'm open to questions. Um, if there is something uh, more you would like to know from me, thank you so much once again for inviting me. Ma'am, thank you for uh, such an insightful and a unique disposition. And now I would like to present you with, with some questions we have from the audience. Sure. You will ask me. Oh, hello, ma'am. My yeah. name is Ria. So I, I have a question you. for you. Yeah. How to break the bias for mid-career women? Um, okay. Um, see, mid-career woman is like, you know, she will be um, uh, maybe a mother and uh, she will have a lot of responsibility at home. At the same time, she may be a, um, you know, if I'm taking teaching profession, she may be, uh, you know, just aspiring to be promoted at work etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, again my uh, take on it is um, you can always uh, see you have to show that you are capable to remove the bias see if some responsibility is given to you I have seen many women shirk responsibilities no 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 I can't do it don't do that because that will only aggravate the situation so you will have to take up the responsibility what is given to you but then at the same time you have to build your support system at home uh, that that's one that so when when a respond or you have to volunteer i can do it uh, uh, and volunteer and do it and don't shy away from taking responsibilities that is one once you show that you're capable you can do it and um one more thing is you have to be visible, you know, in an organization, because what happens mostly is, um, you know, the, the men will have their own groups. They sit and chat and you, you are not, uh, you may not be that aware of what is happening in the institute or in your organization. That is not good. So you should know, I'm not saying that you go sit and gossip and have tea. That's not possible for us. But at least you must be present in meetings. You must be, you, and in meetings, just going and sitting there is not enough. You read through the agenda. That is why I said, you know, when I volunteered for IEEE, that experience was so good because in Trichy, I never had a chairperson board of governors. So I was the chairperson board of governors. So I had to take decisions. I had to lead the meeting. I had to do all that. So in a meeting, if you go, go prepared. Because if you are, have an agenda, read the agenda, make some points. And in a meeting, when you talk something, people will listen. Notice, okay, this lady, you can't take her for granted. She knows the rules. Read the rules of your organization. If something is happening against the rule, have the guts to point it out. Um, except that's what I meant by visible. I, I'm not saying that go and, uh, you know, gossip and have tea. No, that's, that's not required. And... Another mid-career woman advice, not for mid-career, for everyone is you have to fix your priorities because everybody has only 24 hours. So you have to fix your priority, whether you want to spend more time with your friends or you want to do uh, look, look more of TV and YouTube or Netflix, or you want to spend more time on your professional society or, uh, you know, learning something new or um, you know, present, making yourself presentable. So you have to fix your priorities, which is very, very important because uh, we can't do everything. So you have to prioritize and 
devote your time for each and every activity then um, nobody can prevent you nobody can stop you that's my experience and i have i have seen it with many of my colleagues in all institutions if they fix your priorities and if they show that they are capable nobody can stop you okay ma'am thank yeah. you yeah yes ma'am there is sure uh, how much yeah. yeah how much do you think women shape the future is a true phrase okay women shape the future um it is true in one sense but i don't agree that 100% women shape the future um i i would say that you know men also shape the future but uh, they say uh, behind every man there is a woman uh, but i would say women can shape it better because women i feel are more matured and more uh, you know uh, emotionally stable that's what i have seen um, you know with women leaders most of them are much more stable and they can take uh, sensible decisions and they don't explode I, i can very easily say that 5 years i ran an it trichy i managed to do it without even shouting at anyone i've never shouted at people or i've never raised my voice we can do it we have the capability so women shape the future no doubt but give some credit to men also right i think we'll together shape the future yes ma'am yeah thank you so much ma'am i yeah. do have a question yeah so women are overlooked like still overlooked for getting promotions or awards um yes and no because um you know for promotions um it all depends on um how um see if uh, see if if you take it um see i have uh, sat in so many interview boards so i have seen the attitude of the rest of the people in in an interview board i think in trichy we conducted around 100 interview boards you know uh, in in 5 years so uh, again i would say that it is uh natural for men to ask um personal questions to a woman candidate for example if a woman walks in um to take up a position of uh, you know assistant professor uh suppose i'm interviewing in trichy and somebody from haryana or delhi is there uh, so the first question a gentleman my experts uh, will ask is how will you come from uh, delhi to trichy who will take care of your family so i stop them i cut them and i say that you have no right to ask these questions if you are asking this to a lady ask the same thing to a gentleman who is coming from delhi who will take care of your family will you bring your wife i said no personal questions i will cut them short i will not allow any such questions to be asked to a lady so that i think only a lady can do in in and let me tell you all of you as per government of india norms if a lady is attending a, an interview as a candidate you have to have a lady on the panel it's mandatory so you can you can you can um, you know insist that there should be a lady but at the same time i have seen ladies also not supporting women that's the saddest part so uh, you know you have to have you have to change the mindset so i i so they see it's again a patriarchal society so they are worried okay this lady coming from uh, haryana how will she manage that so they are asking it out of their concern but then that's not so she has come for an interview make her comfortable and give the interview so i agree that there are biases but we have to um, overcome uh, uh, the biases we are overcoming it there are so many men who are very supportive and again i have i have seen uh, time and again people saying that you know she will join then she will get married she will have a child she will take six months maternity leave it's part of life you can't get away with it it's it's a part of life it's it's for 
the humanity we are doing that service so we have to accept it and we have to tell the men that you know remove that mindset you are contributing to the society when you're giving maternity leave or giving some consideration to a woman naturally but don't ask for it that's that's what i meant don't claim special treatment being a woman that's what i meant yeah but we are overcoming it slowly all of you will help us overcome it you know the um, the promotions and awards awards and all uh, of course some of the institutions have some of the awarding institutions have a bigger age um, relaxation at least 5 years more a lady like if uh, if the deadline for a uh, man is 35 years for an award some of the awards it's 40 because you know as i said that slow down for 5 years can happen for a lady so we have to fight for it and you know we have to get it yeah thank you so much ma'am that what three at the rate 20 22 is uh, focusing on break the bias yes yeah Thank you so much, ma'am, for answering all our questions. Uh, I would request Madhvi, ma'am, to felicitate our guest, Dr. Manitha. Um, I uh had a I had two three more comments to share. Um, you know, um, to each one of you, I don't know whether all of you are women listening to me, but my last piece of uh, you know, my observation is, all this should start from home. because you know think if you are discriminating your boy child and your girl child in anything because that's the mindset you are building inside the mind of a young child that okay i am a girl i can't do this i am a boy i can do this so it should start from home each one of you give equal opportunity like i said i got uh, from my family so it should start from home it should uh, start Uh, from society and you have to spend time with uh, you know um, with all of this and finally count your blessings when you are down when you are upset count your blessings countless blessings right so even if you fail it's fine you can fail you may not get a position right now but the experience you gain nobody is going to take it out of you so stay calm focused and you can do it thank you so much namaskar uh thank you ma'am uh thank you so much for a wonderful session we are very fortunate to have you here the session was indeed very insightful and inspiring and there are few things which really fascinated me as a listener uh the very first thing which uh, was there in your ppt the career graph uh the career graph is a combination of your professional as well as personal life mm -hmm. so this shows how balanced you are as a person and a lot to learn from you the second point which uh, i like uh, about your is give preference to your personal life and build your support system this is a really important point which you mentioned uh, in your talk ma'am the third point is your go getter attitude which we really loved that you know uh, be the position of the director or the chairperson you know the go getter attitude of yours is really uh, uh, commendable and the last but not the least the the tips which you gave us all of us is work hard and be innovative which is really very important for all of us in the field of technology so it is be it the field of technology or any other field but then we have to work hard be it a man or a women uh, so on behalf of women development of esit and ieee vi ieee student branch i would like to present an e memento uh, the slide will appear oh yes thank you yeah thank you so much ma'am thank you so much for being with us thank, thank you. you anytime anytime i enjoy talking to young uh, young minds and you know you never know what excites them or what uh, just uh, triggers something in them and uh, my final word is follow your passion then only you will succeed you must enjoy what you're doing yes absolutely right? you don't like yes, something you have the option nowadays you take up because in cricket i have seen many of my uh, you know uh, alumni they are no no more engineers they are doing everything else so follow your passion do something which you love then you will put in 100% thank you so much ma'am 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 thank you so
all the best to all of you thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you bye bye i hope i can leave uh, yes ma'am yes no. sorry come on thank you thank you for the uh, and all the best for the rest of the program thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you so much minima for your wonderful session maitri uh, just a second okay okay maitri yes yeah. so you just connecting with the guest just a second Devani ma'am are you there? पॉज किए ना you know uh, i'm i'm really we are really sorry for the for that thing because it's it's an unavoidable uh, circumstances i hope you like the first session okay and uh, i just uh, request uh, asha ma'am to uh, give a vote of thanks to everyone Am I audible? Sorry, Kama. Am I audible? Yes, Asha. Yeah. Thank you. So, good afternoon, everyone. I, Asha Savan, consider myself extremely fortunate to be able to present the vote of thanks for today's panel discussion. on speech 2022 break the bias the entire journey from the beginning to the end of the event was successful for us as we got to meet our wonderful speakers the goal of the event was to bring together young girls on to meet our uh, on account of international women's day and to teach them about the various scenarios and skills and to answer individual questions i would like to begin by thanking our dearest principal ma'am for her invaluable assistance in organizing this event and with dalanka ganpi trust management for their unwavering support in our endeavors next i would like to thank dr mini thomas ma'am for their contributions today i appreciate all the vsit faculty members for attending this event and all the participants for being a lovely audience and actively participating i would like to thank the faculty mentors of ieee vsit sb student branch dr sarika chauhan ma'am then kimaya ma'am and madhvi amankama to captain and steer the ship to ensure smooth operations of the event 
I would like to heartily thank all the invitees for your enthusiastic participation today. To you, we owe the greatest debate of gratitude. It was a great pleasure to have you all to, for this event. Last but not the least, uh, I would like to thank the student team of IEEE BSIP student branch for your contribution and the continuous hard work. Now I have a few requests for the attendees. Uh, the feedback link of the like feedback form link uh, for the session you will find in the chat box uh, within a second. Please fill it out before leaving this webinar. And emails for the feedback form link will also be sent to all the registered attendees. Please make sure you will submit it by today so that you can receive uh, your e-certificate e -certificate of participation. It was a pleasure to have you all present in the event. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye and stay safe, everyone. So in short, I'm just putting the link. Please, uh, everyone, fill the feedback form. Also, I request everyone uh, to switch on the camera so that we can have a group photo to create the memories together. Yes, technical team, just uh, confirm if you just take the group photo. I request everyone to switch on the camera. But done, man. Yeah, thank you, Chetna. Thank you, Irwin. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much. All are requested to fill the feedback form. Hello, Asha, ma'am. Yes, Swati, yes. Uh, ma'am, uh, wait. Uh, Sarika, ma'am, is joining. Oh, wait. Okay, okay. 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 But I think participants almost, so they have left. Uh, I can see uh, 20 participants are there. Is the recording on? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Right I think you have to stop that. Uh, or pause. Okay, okay ma'am. Okay. Uh -huh. At least pause it. Uh, we will see what to do. Okay.
Are we done? Chetna, you are not there. Team, are we done with the group photo? Chetna, you are not there. Chetna, Ruchi. The team and other people also can switch on their cameras. Okay, thank you so much. Sorry, come, I'm leaving. I have to join there.